Water spaces like this one are liminal spaces. This little river was probably used in rituals since it's placed very close to a large burial, uh, burial mound, Horga Mound, which I have used in previous videos. Horga Mound is dating to the Bronze Age, Nordic Bronze Age that is. You can see in rune carving, the rune carvings have, um, oh, they always have the description of the dead to whom the stone is erected and also the name of the living who erected it and between these two there's a bridge and it seems bridges were also associated with the dead or a crossing over between one place and the next rivers also marked out the boundaries of people's land yet we always find burial mounds and places associated with the dead are always situated near a water course that's something I noticed very much when I was looking at the burial practices of the Vendel period uh, in Sweden and, and in England why is it that the burial mounds and the ship burials people being buried inside a boat are always placed so close to water there was association of course even burying people with boats that water or some form of water was going to be a transportation place or that water was the next was was the medium that would transport them from this world to the next and that makes sense then we find so many offerings in rivers to uh, to presumably ancestors or perhaps to deities and that's not just the Germanic people in England there is a continuity of offerings going from the Roman period, the Romano-Celtic period, right through the Anglo-Saxon and to the Viking period. The Vikings came and continued the practice of giving weapons to the water that they had carried, that they had used in, in Scandinavia. There's Norse poetry where it references rivers of weapons, that the river literally flowed with spears or swords because there were so many offerings. But in Scandinavia, here in Scandinavia, they also give offerings to legs. In England, we haven't found any offerings in legs, but in England, it's very common to find weapons in, they've been given to bogs or to um, rivers, such as the Thames. The famous Thames Grammar Sax, for example, is a Sax with an Anglo-Saxon runic inscription across it of all the runes of the Anglo-Saxon foot orc. That was found in the Thames, and many others have been found in the Thames. The Celts, before the Anglo-Saxons even arrived, had done the exact same thing. They would give offerings of gold, silver, all kinds of tools, weapons, etc. to the river. Was that because they were placating a river god? Or was it because the river or the water place was seen as a way to, to give something from this world to the next? Take it to the world of the dead. It can't be denied that the presence of water has a calming effect on the mind. Water just flowing steadily along its course. It does seem an appropriate place for a, relig a religious ceremony. And that's why we can see in many cultures today, in India, in Nepal, in other parts of South Asia, it's still the case that the river is a sacred place. In Nepal, they still have funerals at the side of the river, where they they cremate them. In the Indo-European tradition, cremation was important. They didn't put the bodies into the water, but they would burn them by the water. Across Northern Europe, from Ireland to Denmark, we find bog mummies dating from the Mesolithic to the Iron Age. In Bronze Age Scandinavia, women's braids were also deposited in bogs as offerings. Later in Scandinavia, we find bracteates and fibulae like these in wetlands from the 5th century to the 11th century, and of course, large-scale weapon deposits in water places of Scandinavia, especially rivers, became common in the Viking era. The Norse poem Grimnismor 
says that the weapon-loaded rivers Girvimul and Nut run across the sanctuaries of the homes of the gods, but the river Slither runs from the realm of man into hell, the land of the dead. So a weapon-loaded river could be a boundary between the realm of man and God, or of man and the dead. I've already explained that in both England and Scandinavia, these offerings are frequently found near place names that associate water places with the gods, such as Gudne in Jutland, which means the stream of the gods, or Tisur in Denmark, which means Tjurs Lake, just like Tyres Mere in England, which also means Tyrs Lake. Tyr is the god of battle. Urbrunni, or Brunrörd in Norse sources, means the lake or spring of fate, and that's where the speaker's chair of Odin is situated. Mimirsbrunn should also be translated as the spring or the lake of Mimir, and that's where Odin gets his wisdom. Interestingly, in a Saxon gospel, Heliand, from 830 AD, Christ always addresses his disciples from the edge of the water, as he also does in a Norse poem from the 10th century, where Jesus is placed at Ödrabrunni, just like Odin. In England, place names reveal a sacred aspect to river crossings as well, like Weeford in Staffordshire and Wyfordby in Leicestershire. The first part of these names comes from Old English Weor, which means either an idol or a sacred place. And the other part, Ford, is a place where you cross a river. There are also places in England where, close to the remains of bridges, we find large deposits of animal bones, without signs of butchery, dating to the Viking Age. This indicates a place for animal sacrifices. Pagan worship at Wells and Springs continued in England after conversion. In 990, in one of his homilies, Alfred denounces those who offer gifts to stones, trees and wells. Then in the early 11th century, St. Wulstan decrees that clerics must extinguish every lingering pagan custom, forbidding the worship of wells, stones, and trees. And as late as 1020, King Canute was denouncing those Anglo-Danes who worshipped idols, the sun and moon, fire or flood, wells or stones, or any kind of trees. However, the English people never stopped doing this. And so by the 12th century, the Council of Westminster made a law that all cults of wells were made subject to the authority of the local bishop. That's why we still have many sacred wells and springs in England today, but people think they are Christian. But perhaps water places were also feared. We should remember that in Beowulf, the hero battles the fearsome mother of Grendel at the bottom of a lake. When he tries to take a sword from her underwater hall, but it melts in the blood of the beast. This strange sword in a lake brings the Arthurian Excalibur to mind, an important symbol for British people.